Carol and I learned of an interesting event being held at the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. The museum was holding a stargazing event in conjunction with the Guinness Book of World Records. The Fairbanks Museum was trying to set the Guinness World Record for holding the largest astronomy lesson during a public event on Friday, August 10th. The event was being billed as a giant block party with food, entertainment, and an astronomy lesson. We had visited the Fairbanks Museum several times before to view their exhibits, but the idea of a block party during a nice summer afternoon and evening was very enticing. We decided to venture north from Sugar Hill, New Hampshire. The Fairbanks Museum is located in the town of St. Johnsbury, Vermont. St. Johnsbury is the largest town by population in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. The 2010 census has its population at 7,603. St. Johnsbury is located approximately 10 miles northwest of the Connecticut River and 48 miles south of the Canada-US border. The Fairbanks Museum is a hidden gem in the North Country. The, the original collection of specimens and objects was assembled by Franklin Fairbanks in the tradition of Kunstkammer or Cabinet of Curiosities which he assembled in his home in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Franklin Fairbank was an American businessman, political figure, and one of the founders and first trustees of Rollins College. He was a longtime member of Vermont's Republican State Committee. He was a member of the Vermont House of Representatives and served as speaker from 1872 through 1874. In 1877, he received an honorary Master of Arts degree from Dartmouth College. The museum houses numerous collections that encompass zoology, paleontology, geology, anthropology, ethnology, and other natural sciences. It has a planetarium and a seasonally operating butterfly house. The museum has various traveling exhibits throughout the year featuring a variety of topics. During the stargazing event, there were two traveling exhibits that were on display. One was an elect electricity display, which was on display from the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, and it, an exhibit that familiarizes visitors with concepts of electricity through hands-on demonstrations using vintage equipment. A second exhibit that was on display was titled, The Last of the Hill Farms, Echoes of Vermont Past. This is a collection of photographs from the book of the same name by Richard W. Brown. St. Johnsbury is a beautiful city. The architecture in the city caught my eye the first time we were there. Beautiful old homes, buildings, and churches. Houses look to me like turn of the century, 19th to 20th century and older. One of the most unique buildings is the Fairbanks Museum itself, which is a classic Richardsonian Romanesque building which is located on the National Register of Historic Places and is the cornerstone of St. Johnsbury's his historic Main Street District. With its fine wood interior, original display cases and dioramas, it is one of North America's few surviving natural history museums where you are fully immersed in the wonders of the Victorian era. When Carol and I arrived at the museum, the festivities were setting up. Food vendors and souvenir vendors were setting up. The site for the world record attempt was being fenced off and readied. We milled around looking for some pizza, 
but could see we were early. We decided to go into the museum and look at some of the exhibits. We were pleasantly surprised that admission to the museum was free. On the main floor, we found the electricity exhibits from the Franklin Institute. We experimented with them and marveled at how seemingly complex topics could be so simply and elegantly presented with these vintage displays. From here, we took a quick look at the beautiful rounded ceiling in the museum. The architecture of the building is amazing, and my eye always goes to the ceiling. We went up the unique circular corner staircases to the second level exhibits. Once upstairs, we toured the various exhibits. There are several exhibits dealing with archaeology and ethnology. Then, on to the Minerals, Rocks, Geology of Vermont displays. Many exhibits would have fun quizzes to help get concepts across to you. Over to one of my favorite topics, which is the Paleontology and Evolution exhibits. The display starts off with several casts of dinosaur skulls. Fairbanks has a great display of fossils that is organized by geologic periods with pictures, fossils, and explanations. One of the nice things I like about their displays is that they are not overwhelming with too many examples. They are well organized with a well representative set of examples and clear and colorful explanations. After our visit with the museum displays, we ventured back outside past the bust of Franklin Fairbanks to see how the festivities with the stargazing party was going. I was also still looking for that piece of pizza. The crowds were definitely building, and there were numerous festivities occurring. There were many craft activities that young and old could participate in. There were also several booths giving away free stuff. This was a festive occasion. Lots of people were around to talk to, plenty of displays, and a lot of great food. An interesting activity was a person that had a telescope set up viewing the sun. The scope had all the necessary filters so your eyes would not be damaged. Looking through the scope, one got some great views of the sun, including solar flares. I was fascinated looking at the sun and took a picture of what I was able to view through the telescope. As the twilight of the day approached, anticipation was growing for the world record attempt people started to line up for our controlled entry into the astronomy lesson area. The Guinness organization requires that counting is done in a particular manner. All participants are led through a turnstile that does the counting. The participants are then led into marked off areas that are managed by people that control each group. There has to be one chaperone for every 50 people that have entered. These controls are required by Guinness to ensure an accurate count. The current world record and the number we were trying to beat was 1,104. As the start of the astronomy lesson approaches, excitement is building. The stage for the professor is high above the class so he can project his voice over the crowd. Also, below him on the stage is a screen where pictures of his lecture are projected. Now the lesson starts. 
We learn about the differences between astrology and astronomy. We review several of the constellations and learn about early mythology to time capsules and space travel with science-educated Bobby Farley's Rubio. It is then announced the final attendance exceeded 1,701, a new world record. After the lesson, Mark Breen, science educator and creator of Eye on the Night Sky on Vermont Public Radio, broadcast a tour of the cosmos, explaining events and phenomena while the stars were in full view. What a day, what a night, what an event. A wonderful local event that brought communities together to socialize, entertain, and educate. The event cost nothing to attend other than a few dollars for pizza. This was a great event.